Andrew Day, you play the title role in the United States versus Billie Holiday about how the singer was persecuted by law enforcement after she recorded Strange Fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's your first leading role in a film, and you've spoken before about having doubts about tackling this particular tackling this particular role. Uh, yeah. So, what ultimately made you want to take on the challenge? Oh well, it's actually my first role in a film. <laughs> I guess technically I've been on set, but I just went on set before before to to sing a song, <laughs> which is what I do <laughs> in my voice. So, um, but uh, I mean, my hesitations were. I think sort of obvious that I, I had never acted before um, in in a movie, a TV, or just on camera, you know, on screen, and and um, and I didn't want to be terrible. I, I love Billie Holiday. I'm a big fan of, um, really, really love this woman, and I uh, love Diana Ross and her performance in Lady Sings the Blues, and just think she's just sort of a monstrous talent. And what she gave us, you know, culturally in that moment was was amazing and necessary. Audra McDonald on Broadway was also incredible. And I think that uh, <laughs> I just had this idea in my mind that I would be the one, you know, staying there. Everybody was like, oh man, you know, remember when Andrew Day tried to be Billy Holiday? <laughs> so, um, you know, I was really um, just, uh, um, yeah, I was nervous for that reason. And also I didn't want to retell Lady Sings the Blues, um, but it was really prayer and it was just a, <laughs> as I say, devotion time, or I guess a conversation, right, with God and meditating on the scripture. But I realized um, I'm probably being caused to face my fears, right, and to do an act of great faith. That's how it <clears throat> read out to me. And, um, and then Lee, you know what I mean? Working with Lee, he's one of the greatest directors, I think, of all time. And I think that the performances he's able to pull out of people is incredible. But more than that, uh, it was that he was committed to to humanizing her, you know what I mean, to 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 um, to her story, to telling the truth, to vindicating her legacy, and the world would be able to finally say thank you to her and see her as this as really the great godmother of civil rights, um, and that she sang "Strange Fruit" in defiance of the government, and that ultimately, and them going after her, she sang "Strange Fruit" in defiance of the government, and they went after her for that under the guise of a war on drugs and. And um, so that people would be able to see her strength and to be, to be grateful for her and grateful to her. Uh, you know, it was incentivizing for me as a fan of hers. Uh, and, and playing uh, uh, you know, such a well-known public figure, uh, you know, how did you go about uh, you know, researching her or, or you know, just kind of getting her, her, her mannerisms, her singing style, all, all you know, presenting that? Um, <clears throat> it was, uh, first of all, it was just, you know, talking to Lee and what he wanted, you know what I mean, for the character. And then he, my sharing with him what I wanted to see for her as well and who she was to me, you know, as being so, as the, loving her for as long as I have since I was 11 years old. Um, so, I mean, it was obviously through the music as well but and, and knowing her entire catalog, just listening to, to that music. He introduced me to Tasha Smith, you know, who really taught me um, how to you know because she'll say you did a ton of research and that's great but now you've got to inform this is a shell you know you have to now inform billy holiday the shell that you've built with with a human being you know you have to and that was a bit of a scary part for me right because i have to uh, to to sort of right bring up trauma and actually deal with it and face it in, in ways that i don't think i would have done if it weren't for this movie and if it weren't for her working with me and then how to inform a character, how to sort of fill the margins and and how to, you know, visualize in, in my head who it is I'm speaking to or what I'm dealing with. And then on the other side of it, how to be present with the other actor in the film or the other character, right? Um, and then the huge thing she helped me with was just how to be fluid in Lee's hands. Cause she's like, you can build up all this work, but if you want something different, you gotta be able to let it go on the drop of a dime and transform, you know, and so, she really taught me how to be flexible and how to be water, you know what I mean? Um, and, uh, and then it was studying, I mean, so much research, reading every single book, even a book about her and her relationship with her dog, because it might seem trivial to people, but she had no children and she wanted kids more than anything. And she had no real family. And so her dogs were actually her kids, you know? And so 
um, she's a very special bond she had particularly with her boxer, Mr. Uh, and so in reading a book called With Billy, which was other people's experiences with her, which is really beautiful and eye opening, seeing every documentary of all varying qualities, <laughs> every conspiracy theory on her life, you know what I mean? And, you know, looking at, at um, official, you know, FBI documents, looking at even uh, um, uh, citation cards that she received sometimes from the NAACP for behavior, you know, um, just knowing her story, knowing what she went through. Um, listening to every audio recording of her interviews and and um, rehearsals and the making of certain sides and 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 then finding her voice with Tom Jones, my dialect coach, which was a bit of muscle training, and then it was also mental and it was also physical. I definitely had to sort of damage, I guess, my vocal cords to a degree with the cigarettes and with the yelling and the cold and the lots of alcohol. <laughs> and I don't drink and, um, and, um, and then mannerisms, losing the weight, right? Slowed me down drastically, starving, slowed me down drastically, smoking cigarettes, slowed me down. And seeing where she carried her tension was a huge thing for me as well too. Um, when I sing, I'm, it sucks, I hate this way because I always get horrible pictures of me when I'm singing, but, <laughs> but she carried a lot of her tension sort of in her shoulders and in, the, in this area of her body, you know? And um, so it was, you know, seeing that and feeling that and feeling the similarities of, of how I do that. And um, yeah, putting all of this together and making her a human being. Lee really had to make her a human being. <laughs> and did being a, a singer and recording artist yourself help you connect with her, uh, you know, to, with that side of, of who she was? Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. I, I think so. I think actually what was challenging about that was remembering that while I'm up there singing, I am a singer, but right now I am also, you know, or I won't, won't say an actress, but being, you know what I mean, Billie Holiday. So everything that you do on stage, you have to do as, as, as yourself as Lady Day, you know what I mean? And so, so that actually was sort of like, okay, remember to, you know, you're still here for this, this, for this ultimate performance. Um, but yeah, I understand the, the sort of arc of emotions that happens before you get on stage. I understand what it's like while you're on stage. I understand the need from the audience to love you, to feel you, to understand you, and for your need to love and feel and understand them. I understand the mutual spiritual exchange that happens and all of the stuff that God does, I believe, between myself and them. Um, I understand what it's like after a show when you get off stage and you feel like it went pretty well and you're receiving, you know, the love from people and um, I also understand what happens when it doesn't go good at all. <laughs> um, so I, I just, I understand that need and that love and that washing that I believe happens when you're on stage performing. So yeah, I think that's, that's going to be a commonality, I think, with any, with any singer and any performer. Uh, Strange Fruit has such, uh, of course, an important legacy uh, as a protest song, and I feel like, uh, you know, in this day and age, we're still feeling that legacy, you know, you know, everything from uh, Little Baby's The Bigger Picture and, and yeah. I Can't Breathe by her uh, sort of expressing, uh, uh, like, the continued struggle for Black lives. Like, mm -hmm. how, how do you feel like this film and, and that song connects to, you know, this present moment? Uh, I mean, it, it the 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 film Strange Fruit, Billie Holiday herself. You know, this was a woman that the the entire government went after. Not just the police force; the entire government went after because she was raising awareness about lynching in America. <clears throat> she was letting the world know about racial terror. You know, and um, and she was integrating audiences. One of the first artists, not the first, but one of the first to integrate uh, Carnegie Hall. Um, she was a change maker. She was a wave maker. And oftentimes America does not like to look in a mirror and they do not like artists that hold a mirror up to, to them uh, constantly. And, and because it's dangerous, right? It's dangerous for if you're trying to, to continue in, um, to, to develop this system of oppression, to, to, um, to implement certain things and to continue it growing and to be even more subtle and to continue to grow then people like that are dangerous, you know? And so, uh, but so I think they're absolutely tied. And one of the things that I love about this film is that I hope that it will, if artists who didn't know her before, I, I can't imagine that <coughs> her did not know who Billie Holiday was, you know, but younger artists and or young artists and, you know, people who maybe weren't listening to this type of music that they can 
really recognize her as the gangster that she was. Everything that they're doing with the backing of Black Lives Matter movement in post civil rights era, she was doing by herself, you know what I mean? And she, I mean, you know, wearing fur coats and diamond earrings and that sounds normal to us now, but it was activism for Billie Holiday back then, unconscious activism, because they didn't want to see her wearing those things. How dare a black woman walk around looking like anything like our, our white women, you know? So um, I think hopefully people will see, not only is she closely tied to it, she is the genesis of a lot of things that we say and we do now. That is our first protest song, truly, you know? And she ultimately gave up her life for it. So yeah, I think she's, she's she permeates sort of everything that we do with regard to progressing and moving things forward and equality. Another important aspect of uh, you know the character in this film uh, is her relationship with uh, Jimmy Fletcher, played by Trevante Rhodes, who is first an informant against her and become you know falls in love with her. Uh, what did you think about that relationship and and what kept drawing Billy to to this man who had betrayed her but who also protected her on on, on another yeah, side? Yeah, I mean, I think. Um... <laughs> Interestingly enough, first of all, the Jimmy Fletcher piece was revelatory for me, you know what I mean? I knew that the government went after her, I just didn't realize they infiltrated her heart, right, in such a way, and her, one of her deepest insecurities, which was to be heartbroken, you know, or one of her deepest fears, because she was heartbroken so much, you know, that's really, I mean, the trauma and that, the coping is really where the drugs come from, you know? Um, so I think that relationship, I think what caused her to go back to Jimmy after he, you know, was sent to prison was sort of the same thing that repelled her, right? What drew her to him was what repelled her. It was, the, the, I, I think, a goodness, a desire to be good in him that she was not used to with the rest of the men in her life. And so I think that same thing that drew her to him was also the same thing that repelled her. I don't think in sort of his light, she saw herself as good enough, you know, or even saw herself as someone who could think she wanted a family but I think really seeing herself in that space was probably more difficult you know than than um than she would wanted it to be and so um and I also think that what drew her to him or what allowed her to go back to him um after he betrayed her was empathy Billie Holiday was not a judgmental person which is also why people loved her you know so she didn't judge him she didn't you know hold it over his head and she had empathy for him I think she really had an ability to see people, to love people and to celebrate them for who they are and where they were at, to see behind just the actions to the intention in the heart of a person. And a huge thing with Jimmy was that he was just trying to be, I mean, he was just a black man living in America, that alone, you know, and she's a black woman living in America. So she understands what goes along with those, those two things. And she understands that this man was trying to do the right thing. You know, he was trying to, to um to to make a name for himself to 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 live you know a, a good life and to and uh and he was being used and she recognized that even she recognized that e even when he didn't recognize it it took him she knew right away he was being used it took him a while to realize he was being used so i think she had an empathy and a patience and and a need to sort of almost protect him in the sense that he doesn't know what he's stepping into you know what I mean and that's um he's naive in that way and so I think it was same things that drew her was that empathy that non-judgment but it also his purity of wanting to do that also made her go oh I'm used to men beating me that's familiar I can handle that a heart you know heart damage is harder for her to recover from uh, and, and for this, uh, your first acting role uh, over the last week as we're recording this, you were nominated for a Golden Globe for your performance and for the song Tigress and Tweed, Critics' Choice nominations for uh, Best Actress and, and Best Song. Yeah. How is it to, you know, your first your first time out the gate uh, and, yeah. and Best Actress nominations uh, and, and possibly, fingers crossed, Oscar nomination uh, to come, maybe. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it feels it feels great. It's 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 definitely a blessing, and and I think it's I guess for me it's less like, you know, okay, wow, right out of the gate this is happening. It's sort of like you know, uh, it was a lot of faith and a lot of work. You know what I mean? It was so much work and it was sacrifice. And I think in any realm of life, whether it's your first time, whether it's your last time, you know, whether it's just your tenth or your eleventh time. 
you know, if you're willing to work hard and you're willing to sacrifice and have faith and believe, you know, and, and work in accordance with that, um, you know, then I think it, you know, it's, it's, um, it doesn't necessarily matter that it's the first, I see where the story, you know what I mean, is in that, you know, I totally understand, you know, um, but it, it was, it was so much work and it was, it was, <laughs> You know, and, and actually when I was preparing for it, I was not looking ahead to an award season. It was just, first of all, trying to get through because I was terrified and every single day I thought I was going to be fired. You know what I mean? So it was like, but it was, you know, just honoring her legacy and just, I mean, in anything you endeavor to do, it's like something I say that, you know, if I'm performing for an audience of five or 5,000, it has to be the same energy and the same, you know, and the same, same commitment to it. And, um, so I just, I don't know, I'm really, really grateful. I think it's amazing, you know, and um, uh, yeah, it just, it was, a, it was a lot. It was definitely a lot of faith, um, a lot of trust and a, a shit ton of work that went into it, you know? <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, to, to have come into this, uh, you know, first into the businesses primarily as a singer and now as an actress, do the two, uh, like, how do they compare in terms of, being able to express yourself as an artist, the, those two different mm. mediums. Um, I mean, they do compare, right? I mean, the performance of it is sort of, my acting coach used to tell me it's the same anointing that you tap into for singing. And I didn't realize it at first. And then I realized like, oh, you know, it's that there is a, there is a, there's a commitment there. You know what I mean? And there is a, there's a bit of losing yourself differently. Now those, the way you lose yourself is different, but you do lose yourself when you're doing music and you're on stage and you're, you know, you're lost in whatever it is that the spirit is sort of creating in that moment. And then with Billy, I mean, I, I lost myself to the degree where I could not find myself when we were done. So, and I am still picking up little pieces of it, but um, so, but it's different, right? Cause the burden is different. When I'm doing on stage, I lose myself, but I lose, I'm in myself losing myself, you know, with Billie Holiday, I have to, I have to be, I have to be her, you know, I can't act like her, I have to be her. And then there's another burden that's sort of laid on you, you know, a beautiful burden, but of having to honor her legacy and to, to accurately, accurately portray not just her characteristics and her mannerisms, but her personhood and her humanity, you know? And so there's sort of that added burden of that, you know, I'm like, I can't just do me. I have to, I have to do Billy, you know? And so, um, but it, there is a bit of losing yourself in both of those things. That's very familiar, I think, to me. Well, uh, congratulations on the film, mm -hmm. on your Golden Globe and Critics' Choice nominations, um, and fingers crossed for the season to come. Uh, thank, you th so thank you so much for, for talking to me today. Yeah, no, I enjoyed this. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate you. <laughs>